Brian, you mentioned something about prices, you know, increasing and, and, and I think just in general, there's, you know, is hyperinflation actually taking place? And Lee, I know you're in the, you know, you, you deal with a lot of shipping, a lot of logistics in your businesses, and maybe you can give a little bit of insight as to what's taking place right now as it relates to inflation in regards to freight and giving a heads up to the audience that, you know, may not be very sure where things are pointed as it relates to price increases. Yeah, so I mean, presumably, like the audience that we're dealing with, like contractors, um, you know, they talk in jobs and materials, right, and, and equipment and supplies. And, you know, it's one thing, it, it, you know, Brian was talking about balancing logistics and, you know, planning your year to get it done. It's another that you get there and you don't have what you need to finish it, or you've got a massive, you know, quarter million dollar job that you've got to get 20 grand worth of lines striped and you can't get paint to do it. Um, so, I mean, the way that I, I mean, the, the first is, I mean, it's a good problem to have, to have lots of work in front of you. So be grateful for that if, if that's you. Um, but the second point is, I mean, you know, going to where Brian's, going a little bit deeper into what Brian was saying. Um, if you're looking at the logistics and you're looking at what the rest of your year looks like, you should probably be looking at what your consumables are, what equipment and tools you're gonna need well in advance and make sure that you're securing them. Um, what people you know, don't really think about is that a lot of tools or components for tools or inputs for your equipment are coming from Asia, whether it's China, Japan, or one of the Asian areas. And if you need a line striper and the line striper supplier is on back order for this part, you're not getting that machine. You know? And if you need that machine, to get the job done, that's your, you know, that's your Achilles heel, right? And your supplier and your tools, and um, whether it's, you know, whether it's ass, whether it's sealer, whether it's crack sealant, whether it's um, line paint, or whether it's tools or equipment, if you need something to get the job done and you don't have it, that's a problem. So, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, look at what you've got for the rest of the year, break it down into services, look at the tools, equipment, and kind of the the critical parts that you can't do without um, and make sure that you've got a plan to, to get those in advance. Um, you know, if you, if cash flow is tight and you don't have the cash in the bank, um, cash is cheap right now from banks, you know, capital is at the lowest price ever, you know, get a line of credit or, or borrow or whatever else to, to bring that stuff in and don't be caught, you know, two months down the road um, with a, you know, a, say a crappier finish than what you could have because you didn't have paint or you didn't have a tool or this or that. So that's kind of the first thing I would say there. Um, you know, it, what's driving it? Um, I think there's, I think when COVID hit, you know, we saw a temporary pause where a lot of companies hit the pause, you know, everybody hit the pause button and said, whoa, where's this going to go? And that pause caused, you know, factories and suppliers to just Everyone did the same thing, slow down, stop making stuff. And that, you know, it's, it's easy to slow down and stop making stuff. I mean, anybody can hit a, hit, a, hit a switch and put their production to 50%, right? Not very hard to do. I think what we've seen this year is that that mixed with, you know, a lot of um, businesses that were closed, like restaurant and service sector, everybody coming on board, you know, obviously government stimulus, just put a just lit a fire under the economy and what you're seeing is everyone react the opposite way so that that overreaction i believe is causing an extreme shortage in containers we don't have enough we don't have enough trucks you know or or logistics equipment to make up for that you know and and that's what's caused you know rates to basically go through the roof like to give you guys an idea we deal with a lot of imp, uh, you know imports from asia and Containers have gone from 3,500 bucks door to door from Shanghai to Toronto to 24,000, um, you know, a container, you know, in, inside of 12 months. That's, it, it's crazy. Like it's, you know, you're talking six, five, 600%, 700% increases. <clears throat> and um, those no impacts, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, th those impacts haven't really fully made it through the supply chain to consumer yet. So you're seeing some increases. And, you know, when we talk about inflation, it's starting to become clear, you know, in some areas. Um, 
but it's not fully like it's it, it certainly hasn't flushed out and i think if you have the chance to you know if, if there's major equipment that you want to buy this year we use cars as an example um cars are a lot more expensive right now than what they were a year ago i mean anywhere from 15 25 percent depending on what you're looking at um that that's a lot i mean if you're looking at some major purchase for your business uh, you're gonna buy a power paver or, or something like that or whatever it might be 25 percent on a on anything is it's a significant amount to go up so i guess i would say be mindful of what your needs are you know and if you've got extra cash it's a good way to deploy it and making sure that you've got you know supplies and, and products and equipment covered um and if you don't consider borrowing to, to bridge the gap because I, I don't think that these are going to be short-term things i think we're likely in for you know another six to 18 months of this and and i guess the other thing i would say i don't want to go down a covid uh, i don't want to down, go down the, the road of covid here but nobody really knows when life goes back to normal and what normal means so you know, with that, there's going to be instability and, um, you know, be, pre be prepared for it. If you're, you're better off, if you're the guy that's got, the, you know, got the ability to do the job, than if you're the guy that, you know, waited to the last minute and is showing up at a paint store to find out that you can't get paint to do the job that you committed to. So be prepared. It's, it's, it's so, it's so true. We're seeing it at, a, you know, in our company at Asphalt Kingdom, what we're noticing is that there's this, this new rush right now in the month of August as fall's approaching. And we're seeing this rush where people are coming in and, and buying a lot of equipment and supplies that are literally stocking up rain. And a lot of people, we have a new funding partner that we're working with called ClickLease and the approval rates are awesome. So even if the credit's shitty, people are still being approved for it and they're very, very reasonable too. But I think what you're hitting on a, on a very good point is that right now you have the opportunity to buy at lesser price than what you will experience. There's no doubt that you will, that you will experience going into spring of 2022, no doubt. And the facts are right now after this, as we've gone through the season, we're August now. So you technically should be more flush with cash right now than you would be rolling into March. And so if you're going to make some moves to scale your business and to be able to go into the new year, finish strong, but go into the new year with some really good power punch, you should really be prepping for that now versus later. Because as you said, Lee, it hasn't all that shipping uh, increase in price and so on and so forth hasn't trickled down the line yet to a lot of the stock that's still sitting on shelves and or in warehouses at previous cost pricing. Well, and I want to add to that too. I mean, if you're, so, I mean, you know, there's two sides of this. One is if you're, if your business is fully booked to the year end and you know, you're not going to be able to get every ounce of work done. Well, then the focus this year is on yields and, you know, make the best bottom line you can of it, right? Which is, you know, negotiate in and buy bulk, like get what you need to get the job done. And if you can save a few bucks now, you're probably gonna get a better result in negotiating than you will in six months from now. Um, and on the flip side, if you're not full and you're sitting here trying to basically fill up your schedule, this is a great, this is greatest time, as, this is as great of a time as any to start dialing all your proposals, telling them, look, now's the time you have capacity and it's going to get more expensive next year. Like you win, there's a way to approach this, whether or not you're, you know, completely booked um, or whether you're still booking, you know, and there's a win on either angle. But if you're, if you are fully booked, yeah, hundred percent at this point, you know, you're going to need the materials and supplies. So it's a game of numbers. If you can, if you can shave 5% off of the, a uh, half a million dollars spend, that's $25,000 to year end, you're going to save, right? So why not do it? Yeah, you know, I'll, Brian, I, I would add to that, man, that, you know, the whole time you guys were thinking uh, or talking there, I was thinking that, you know, when it comes down to resources to get these supplies, the places that you go to get business, if you don't have it, um, this is a perfect example of how valuable your network is. How, how valuable the people you're connected to and the resources you're able to tap into really are. Because, you know, the, the group of people that 
you know, I interact with the most, uh, they, they are finding ways to get stuff done, right? Versus I interact with a lot of people online or people DM me asking for help and finding these things that we're talking about, you know, maybe, maybe it's paint or supplies or equipment or whatever it is. And so I think it's more important than ever to, to be evaluating who you're connecting to and how much time are you investing into those relationships? Because those things, uh, not just from an equipment supplies and access to things standpoint, but also your network is going to be the difference between you being able to stay focused and mentally tough through this and, and keep your eye on the prize and really advance forward uh, and maybe drift off out into you know, wherever everybody else lies, uh, confused about what to do. So I think it's important to realize that as you're going through these things, do not go through it alone, man. Find, find your tribe and find the people that can really help you and get you pointed in the right direction.